Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia, and this is Minerva, and let's talk about Jacob Rees-Mogg's latest book, The Victorians, Twelve Titans Who Forged Britain. For those of you who are not familiar with Jacob Rees-Mogg, maybe you are not from the UK, or maybe you're not familiar with UK politics, let me just give you a short introduction of who this author is. Jacob Rees-Mogg is a Conservative Member of Parliament. He's been an MP since 2010. He's known for calling himself a man of the people, despite having been educated at Eton and Oxford. He's proud of never having changed a nappy in his life, despite having six children. His record on women's rights, reproductive rights and LGBT issues is as you would expect, and he has now written a book about the Victorian period. This book, which is coming out in a few days' time, is a collection of essays which are all biographies of the 12 men and women that he chose to represent the period. Did I say men and women? I meant men and women, because the only female titan on his list is Queen Victoria herself. Now, I don't normally discuss books on this channel that I haven't yet read, but for some reason the publisher didn't send me a review copy of this, I know, and despite really kind of wanting to read this book, I'm not sure I want to put more money into Jacob Rees-Mogg's already well-padded investment banker pockets. So today I'm going to discuss what we have heard about the books from other critics and reviews. One could ask the question, is Jacob Rees-Mogg even qualified to write a book about the Victorian period? Well, he does have a 2-1 in history from Oxford, so for me that's enough qualification. However, he seems to have infused his history with more than the generally accepted amount of bias. According to some of the reviews that I have read, he is not even looking at the Victorian period within the context of the Victorian period, but is purely projecting his own policies and his own ideas on these 11 men and one woman that he has chosen to represent the period. One of the men on his list, for example, was Robert Peel, who was one of the first politicians and the first prime minister to come from an industrial background uh, who wasn't part of the establishment when he entered politics. All that is what Jacob Rees-Mogg would want you to think. Let me quote from a Guardian review of his book, which is linked down below in the description box, as well as all of the other sources that I am quoting here. Rees-Mogg rewrites Robert Peel, the harrowing Oxford-educated son of a wealthy Lancastrian industrialist, into, quote, essentially a self-made man who set out, quote, to better himself in the true Victorian style. From such humble beginnings, and entirely undeterred by the fact that his father was actually a baronet, Peel grafted and grafted until he reached the very top of the Tory party. Jacob Rees-Mogg is very much projecting his own policies and his own ideals onto people of the past in order to legitimise his views and legitimise his policies. One of the issues that I have with books that focus in on individual biographies as representative of a whole era, of a whole nation of people, is that, well, they are not. They are not representative of one era, of one nation of people. Jacob Rees-Mogg is a man who enjoys the reputation he has as a time traveller from a past in which men spoke Latin and women didn't have the vote. He seems to be stuck in the past when it comes to his historical methodology, when it comes to his approach to history. Now, I have a both a personal and a professional interest in the 19th century, and in most of the books that I read about this time that were also written in this century, they very rarely focus on these big names on the prime ministers and the royals and the military men and the Oxford professors, which are exactly the people who Jacob Rees-Mogg's idolizes in his book, whom he calls the Titans. Modern historiography focuses much more on the everyday, on the people like you and me, on the people that Jacob Rees-Mogg couldn't care less about. 
So I think the real failure of this book is not what uh, some reviewers have described as the schoolboy prose or the really clumsy overlaying of 21st century politics onto 19th century issues, but is in fact this idea that you pick out 11 privileged, rich, influential men and one privileged, rich, influential woman, and you say that these are the, the Victorians, when in fact the millions of people who actually shaped the era, the millions of people who lived and died Victorians, the people who collectively made more of an impact on us than those 11 men and one woman, were completely ignored. And that is just not what modern history books should be doing. Because if you think about a Jacob B. Smog in 200 years time writing a book about the millennials, is he going to write about you and me? So that leaves the question at the end whether I am going to read this book or not. I really want to read it because I really want to see how bad it is. I admit that the sources that I've picked out here could be considered biased. I myself, oh, I'm definitely biased towards Jacob rees -Mogg. So I do kind of want to read this book, but I don't want to give him the money. I'm not going to link the book in the description box uh, like I usually do, I'm sure. If you Google it, you'll find it yourself if you're interested in buying that. Until then, I would like to hear from you which books about the Victorians you can recommend over this Jacob B. Smog book. For my own reading, I don't really have any general books about the Victorian period that I can recommend, and that's purely because I tend to read more specialized books, books that focus on a specific topic, a specific aspect of the 19th century. But two that I can recommend if you are interested in more in a more specialized uh, look at the 19th century are Jane McDermott's The Schooling of Girls in Britain and Ireland, 1800 to 1900, and also The Women's Movement and Women's Employment in 19th Century Britain by Ellen Jordan. But please post your recommendations in the comment section. And the last thing, that I should mention is, while Jacob Rees-Mock is incredibly entertaining as a figure on TV, he is a very dangerous man and he could be your next Prime Minister, so take him seriously. Thank you for watching. Bye!